To get the uh, engine out, we're going to end up dropping it out the bottom. Because the engine transmission combo, the way it is, there's not enough room. Well, there might be to get it off of this transmission to get the input shaft out of the engine. But with the way the adapter plate and everything is on the diesel, there's no way there's enough room in here to be able to slide it over and get it back in the transmission. <clears throat> I think it'd be harder to try and fight it that way and then to just drop the whole thing out the bottom. Then we can hook the transmission to the Kubota and then just slide them back in. So, be able to get underneath it and start pulling everything apart. You can go ahead and get it jacked up and on some jack stands and get to work. Alright, the engine's all removed. I'm going to take the charcoal canister and these vacuum lines and stuff out because I'm not going to need them with the diesel and it doesn't have a vacuum pump anyways. So We'll see how that goes with the brakes when I get it back going. If, I, if it's not good enough then I'll have to add some kind of vacuum pump for the power brakes but it's not a very big car so I imagine it shouldn't be much of an issue it's not fast either so <laughs> let's go ahead and get that out all right now I got the old transmission over by the uh, Kubota pull my alignment tool out and put the new they're out bearing it came with the clutch kit. Make sure it doesn't sound too bad. Put a little anti seize on the snout so it doesn't get stuck. Got to pull this dowel out because uh, the way this upper bolt making the adapter plate, it wasn't enough meat there to have that dowel there but I've still got the dowel on the bottom and it can line up on the bolts slip that little guy out There we go. It's just a tight fit. Just needed a good bump. Alright, go ahead and put the starter on. Now all I gotta do is get one of these tabs off the old geo motor. Put it up over here for slinging it up in there and then get some shorter bolts for this plate and sling it up in all right got the Kubota going in here so we'll we got the new motor going in here it's rebuilt it just has a different valve cover we're gonna need one on the back to level it out well I figure we should be able to get this mount in yeah and then Hopefully swing it up into that one, because then we gotta build that one. That's the one we gotta build. Okay, so here's what we got going on. Oh look, you can see the marks where it was touching. Beautiful, look at that, you see that? Yeah, we wanna keep that there. You see this here? We don't need that. It don't do nothing. So we're going to make that disappear. All the way back to here. All the way back to there. My phone's ringing. Somebody wants me. Doubtful. Doubtful. So this is custom work right here. You're going to take your time on that, right? Sure. Notice the safety protocols with gloves and a face shield. We've learned in the past.
there you go. All right, there we go. All right, so cut this outer part of the pulley off. Dress it up a little with the grinder. Now it's, you know, hopefully it'll fit because it's a little over an inch shorter. It's not dressing, it's balancing. Hold up. Caught over there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Let me get down there and put my donuts in. I'm pretty sure this bolt's gonna hit. <laughs> It'll self clear. <laughs> <coughs> Shit will be fine. Oh, this may make building the engine mount easier. I was planning on coming up and going to that, but if you gotta cut all that out, I can put the engine mount on the bottom of the frame. I mean, that's. We gotta take it out anyway, so like I said, we can mark it, we can cut that, because this, I mean, it'll work with it there, but if I'm gonna not be using that mount, I'd rather cut this, get rid of ears it. out, yeah. So go underneath, mark where that's at. I say we go underneath, we do that same pipe idea. I got pipe in the back of my truck that we can use. Watch it. Fun. I'm drilling out the spot welds so we can take that bracket out. There's no fucking way. Yeah. Had to hit the right spot again. Mm -hmm. We can just put self tappers in there and it'll hold. All right, notched out a section there. Now we're gonna try pulling the engine back up in here and see how it looks, that everything looks good. We'll fill it back in, get a piece of pipe and cut it and weld it in to fill the gap we cut out. Looks pretty level, right? Looks pretty level. But what about this way, as far as when the transmission goes in? Well, it should be based on that back one and that other side should pretty well. That's your pulley hitting. Yeah. I didn't go far enough forward. Do that again? Yeah. In the back corner. I know we could pull it that way. That'll solve clearance. <coughs> so I need to cut that out a little wider, huh? portion of the front engine mount in. Took some eighth one by two tube and kind of stitch welded it to the cross member there. One to make it a little stiffer and two to uh, give enough height to hook what was left of the old bracket. We took off the uh, fender to it so it covers the whole length from top to bottom. Um, some of the welds aren't the prettiest, but it's a hard spot to get into, so it'll hold. Uh, just waiting to let it cool off now so I can put the mount in and actually weld the part to the mount into that bracket right there on the block. And then it'll be fully mounted and we can start running the stuff to fuel lines and coolant hoses and all that fun stuff. Got the lower motor mount all in, painted up. Ended up using that same hose on the bottom as the top, but cut it here and here and put pipes in so we could twist it and extend it a little bit so it lined up well and cleared the exhaust.
Got the air filter on, fuel's all ran. The return just loops back in here. Don't need a lot of pressure. This has its own fuel pump on it. So it just needs a supply up to that pump. Got everything hooked up, stripped out all the EFI wiring. You just have the bare minimum to run this with the, you know, temperature sensor and the oil pressure. Got the uh, start solenoid teed off the starter down there. And then the other one runs to the old coil wire. Um, yeah, and that's got the coil relay, or the, uh, got the glow plug relay there and glow plug timer, which isn't currently working properly. It turns them on, but it never turns them off. The wire, these are going to go to the uh, fan control sensor once it gets here. The one out of the metro block when it go anywhere in this. So I'm going to put it up here. It's got one coming. I'll bundle up the whole harness here when all the gauges and stuff get in. I get them installed because I want to run them in the bundle so it looks nice and clean. Maybe it ran out of coolant. It's not puffing out anymore. I don't know, hit the glow plugs. What do you, how do I do that? Uh, switch to your right. A red light should come on. All right, now hit it. All right, that's good. You can turn it off. So yeah, seems the uh, head gasket, or not the head gasket, the crack in the head weld didn't hold, but took it for a little test drive, was able to get it up to 65. Cruised really nicely at 60, so yeah, we're going to round up a head and then put that on and should be a good going machine then.